you are working in our midst, our hearts and our minds are ready to receive your engrafted word which is able to save our souls. Feel us today, renew our mind, renew our thinking and change our lives. We remember those who don't have the same opportunity with us and we pray for them. We ask that you make it available to them through your church. We remember those parts around the world that the coronavirus is really threatening the lives of people, taking lives of people, bringing sadness to unions, to families, to cities. We know the cure. Jesus Christ is the cure. And we belong to the cure. We have the life of the cure. So we declare, let there be cure in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be cure. Let there be healing. Let there be cure. We speak forth its vaccines. 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 We speak forth the discovery medically, scientifically of the vaccination of coronavirus. We speak it forth in the name of Jesus. Let there be light of cure. Let the researchers, scientists, medical world open their eyes to find the cure. While we wait for that cure being discovered by the medical world, we bear the cure. We carry the cure. We decree the cure upon those cities, upon those places where there are true Christians. We speak for the cure in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray for Israel, your people, our people, and that peace will continue to abound in their land. Oh, that you will bless them and increase them and use them these last days to be a help and a blessing to the nations of the world. We pray for those who haven't received Yeshua, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, among the remnant of Israel. We pray, Father, that you enlighten the eyes of their understanding to receive the Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, the time has come. Uh, life spring from your word, living water from your word. We're thirsty for it and we open our hearts to it. We receive direction, we receive life, we receive correction, instruction from your word in this time, refreshing from your spirit in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Let's sing our declaration of faith. I have a wonderful treasure, the gift of God without measure. We shall travel together, my Bible and I. Is it true? You be seated. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. So, I think your brethren in the first service, all of them have some program today. So all of them came to the first service and left you in the second service. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yesterday we started talking about godly advice. How godly advice will keep you from the root <laughs> of your problems. How godly advice will keep you from embarrassment. On the radio this week, and probably this month, I'll be taking this book, Wisdom for Leaders, by Agape, my wife, and it has amazing titles. On the radio this week, I'll be taking Wisdom for Leaders. I'll just give you two uh, titles here. One is Foundation. What a title. And uh, another is Overconfidence. So if you're a leader, do not miss this uh, podcast, do not miss this broadcast, webcast, which we're having on TAN Radio. If you have downloaded TAN Radio and uh, you've not been listening to it, now is the time. It's a challenge. I'll be treating this book, 
for the whole of this week, if not for the whole of the month, cover to cover, so you will be blessed. Amen. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter number 6. <coughs> Romans chapter number 6. Do not fear about the news that is being spread around. The news of virus. The news that people are reading and is bringing tension to so many. You do not fear. Uh, the Lord knows those that are His. And if you belong to him, you belong to the cure. Do not fear. And whenever you have that tendency to fear, say to yourself, I, I refuse to fear. I have received the spirit of love, power, and sound mind. And meditate upon Romans 8, 1 and 2. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So don't be in tension wherever you are. Let these words comfort you. Even if you heard that someone died of this virus in your city, or even close by, do not fear. His word will not pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. Hallelujah. This morning we're discussing about the newness of life. So in Romans chapter number 6, the scripture unveils amazing truths about your new life. Before we read, I'd like to lay a foundation about understanding. In Ephesians chapter number 1, the Bible talked about the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know the hope of your calling. It's better not to know the Bible than to misunderstand the Bible. Because the message that it gives to you, if you misunderstand it, you misinterpret it. And when you misinterpret it, so many people get the wrong message. So my prayer for you is that whenever you read the Bible, whenever you share a verse, whenever you think of a verse, may your understanding be enlightened by the spirit of wisdom. May you be one who interprets the Bible rightly. The scripture talks about rightly dividing the word of truth. Why do I start with this understanding? I start with this understanding because Christianity is resting on an understanding. And that is the understanding he gave us. The epistle of John said, he has given us this understanding. He has given us an understanding. The understanding is given to us. We're about to unveil it. He's given us a new life. And this life is operational only, only by your understanding. You can access it by your understanding. The Holy Spirit will operate it quite well, but you access it by your understanding. You access this life by understanding. So I don't think... I don't desire, neither do I have preconceived ideas when I hear the Bible reading or when I read the Bible. I don't put <laughs> any preconceived ideas. I don't bring any borrowed, borrowed doctrine which I cannot prove by the Word of God. I don't bring anything when I read the Bible or when I listen to the reading of the Bible. I, I don't bring anything. I don't. The, 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 most, the most deceitful thing that a Christian can do is to think he understands what he doesn't understand. For example, being a Christian, do you understand what it is to be a Christian? It's not just a belief. We just talked about coronavirus. When someone has a virus, that one is kind of infected. And that one can pass the virus, it depends on how the virus is, can pass the virus to another person. 
When we talk about Christian faith, it's like a virus, but it's, it's not a destructive thing. It is full of life. The similarity here is when you are infected by a virus, something happens to you. It's not a belief. It's a medical condition. When you, when you are a Christian, it's not a belief. It's a spiritual status. It's a spiritual condition that, I like this, that conditions your natural. It's a spiritual condition that conditions your natural. So many of you who think that Christianity is a belief and it's a religion, you have the most myopic view of Christianity. It's a life. It's a life. It's a life. Christianity is a life. And uh, the moment I came to the realization of that, I changed. And it happened to me so well that my entrance into the kingdom of God was an entrance of thunderstrike, inexpressible change. I, I, I don't know how to express it. The Lord helps me. So the foundation here is if you don't understand the Christian life, you will think you're a Christian, but you're not. So let me say who is not a Christian, so you can get the concept of understanding before we get into the subject. A Christian is not the one who knows Jesus. A Christian is not the one who fears Jesus or fears God. Unbelievers fear God. They accumulate gods. When you tell them the story of a God, if they like it, they will take it and they will add it to their gods. Unbelievers, heathen, who do not know the creator of heaven and earth, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the author of life, the giver of life and food to all flesh, the father of spirits. People who don't know him fear him. But yet, they are not Christians. Unbelievers fear God, but they are not Christians. To be a Christian, you have to have the life of Christ in you. That is what it is to be a Christian. It's not, I love this, it's not to believe in Christ to be a Christian. That is one of the experience of Christian life, believing in Christ. For example, I said it in the first service, you move to a new home, a new house, you have to believe it. Am I correct? <laughs> Are there people here? If you move to a new house, you have to believe it. Otherwise, you go to the old house. If you move to a new house, you have to believe it. You have to have a document to show. You have to see the address. You have to kind of memorize the address and its landmark. But after a while, you don't do that. You and your house almost become like one. True or false? It comes into your subconsciousness. You just move into your house. It can come to the extent that even if you are blindfolded or blindfolded, you can count your step and turn right and left and tell the people where you are and what you're doing. That much unity you have with your home. In Christianity, we do not just believe in Jesus. We do not just believe in Jesus, we have his life. Now, until that is clear to you, your understanding is misunderstanding. And your Christianity, that's, the way, that's why it is the way it is. The newness of life. We're talking about the newness of life. You need to understand that what you have is more than a belief. What you have is more than a religion is a life. When someone is infected by a virus, it's not a belief, it's a medical condition. When you receive Christ, it's not a belief. It's a spiritual condition that conditions your natural. 
if this is not understood, all what you build, it will be in the air of religion. All what you do will just be mere things. Understand this is a life. You received a life. You don't just receive a belief, you receive a life. From verse 1, Romans chapter number 6, the scripture says, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? May it never be. How shall we who die to sin still live in it? Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? This baptism is talking about here is not water baptism. However, water baptism is included. The first baptism that we have is written in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 13. The Spirit reveals to the apostle and says, By one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. The scripture talks about we are baptized into one body. Now the baptism into one body is not water baptism. The baptism into one body is Holy Spirit baptism. It brings you. No one can get saved outside the Holy Spirit. You, salvation is not possible outside the Holy Spirit. You cannot be psychologically saved. You cannot be saved by theory. You can only be saved by the intervention of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, when he offered his blood, the book of Hebrews tells us he offered his blood by the Holy Spirit. When priests operate in the office of priesthood, they operate by the Holy Spirit. They don't operate by simply spreading blood and killing animals to offer sacrifice. Priests are chosen by the Spirit. They operate by the Spirit. So everything we do amounts to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the activator, executor, the one who puts life to what we do. So when you do not understand that what you receive is a life, you have a misunderstanding of your salvation. And that misunderstanding will reproduce misunderstanding and your living will be full of confusion and you have so many questions. This is the reason why many Christians are the way they are. They have misunderstood the bedrock of salvation and that is a life. Salvation is a life, it's not a belief. Believing is part of it. Salvation is a life, you received a life. It's a life that you received. So start to learn about that life. Start to appropriate that life. That is how it works. Those who are online, thank you for joining. We will be continuing on the radio, so you can join us over the radio. God bless you. Salvation. Satisfy the human heart. Money cannot satisfy the human heart. Pleasure cannot satisfy the human heart. Comfort cannot satisfy the human heart. Nothing entirely in this world can satisfy the human heart. Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Word of God made flesh. God's Word made flesh. And He walked the earth. And He faced the things that we're facing, passed through the difficulties that we passed through, and was without sin, the Bible says. He was without sin. He was a sinless. The seed of God's Word became flesh. And he died on the cross for my sins and for your sins. And the Bible says, Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The name of the Lord Jesus. You can call upon that name wherever you are and you can be saved today. If you are not yet born again, we invite you to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life by praying this prayer. O oh Lord God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I ask Jesus to come into my heart to be the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I am saved. I am born again. I am a child of God. I now have Christ dwelling in me. I am a new creation. Hallelujah. If you have just said that prayer, 
Congratulations! You are now a child of God. To receive more information on how you can grow as a Christian, please get in touch with us by calling any of the numbers displayed on your screen or visit our website. Nothing entire. Welcome to Love Embassy of All Nations, a Bible church and a leadership training center by Edmunds Okoro Day Ministries, EOM. We have seen many lives transformed. You are next for transformation. Our if church is made Father, up of various the ministries, state of Israel, electronic and, and print media, church Israel. services, live Bible training sessions and also through our website. Humanitarian outreach, helping the widows, widowers, aged and the needy, anti-suicide and success campaign. The annual Love Feast, World Changers Day and Vision Day. To get more information please refer to our brochure, or log into our website www.loveembassy.in, or www.okorode.org. These are our monthly activities, Sunday morning worship service starts at 7.30 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. respectively, Wednesday Bible study starts at 6 p.m. Every first Sunday is our healing service, one combined service. Every Saturday at 3 p.m. is a general prayer, healing and deliverance service, where we have the prayer line. 11 a.m. every second Saturday is our baptismal class. Every last Friday is our school of prayer, where we come to learn, pray and intercede. Three hours experience of real biblical prayer. And usually there will not be PhD on the following day which is Saturday. You can watch anytime and from anywhere our TV programs. Free monthly DVDs, Teach All Nations TV report, short movies and... <laughs> and more on the internet by subscribing to our YouTube channel Teach All Nations. Love Embassy of All Nations, ministering God's love in a hurting world.